This is one of Cluny the Scourge's online Rome Total War battles, once again the Barbarian Invasion Expansion. I'm playing as the Burgundii Barbarians. I've taken six Lombard archers with the gold weapon upgrade, four spear warbands which I've deployed behind them to protect my archers against uh, charge by cavalry. I've taken two units of Golden Band and two units of Lombard Berserkers. Those are my elite infantry which I've deployed on the right. And I've taken six units of Noble Cavalry, also with the Gold Weapon Upgrade. Now I've deployed three of those in these woods here, so that they are hidden at the beginning. My intention is to give the enemy the impression that my cavalry is weak, and so lure him into making a cavalry strike on my left, which I will then surprise him with, with the bulk of my cavalry. Now my elite uh, infantry units there on the right are also hidden and I intend to use those to swing around the enemy flank. Now my opponent is Quintus or Praetorian Quintus as he's sometimes known and he's playing as the Eastern Roman Empire so I'm expecting superior archers to mine. Uh, they have the Eastern archers which are the best archers in the game. I'm equipped only with Lombard archers, which are cheaper than the chosen archer warbands, which are available to the Burgundii, uh, but still have a significant striking power, it's just that their armour is inferior. I have three units on loose formation in front of those spear warbands, and three on tight formation behind, uh, for when the enemy close with me. I can always redeploy those later if necessary. Now my spear warbands are not really the equivalent of, say, Germanian phalanx spear warbands in the uh, vanilla Rome Total War. They're nothing special at all. They're just there to provide bulk and hold the line for my uh, archers. Now, Quintus has taken five units of eastern archers, which are deployed on loose formation in front in a skirmish line. One unit of regular archers, which are behind, which doesn't really make sense because they have a much shorter range than the eastern archers. Four units of Comitatenses, two units of Legio Lanciarii behind them, that's uh, legionaries equipped with spears, uh, and that's pretty smart deploying them on the flank there, uh, in case I strike it in with cavalry. He has a unit of priests, providing morale support from behind and his cavalry component comprises two units of Scolai Palatini, that's heavy cavalry, and two units of super heavy cataphracts, one of which is of the Clibinarii type, that's mace equipped, not so strong in the charge, but uh, more effective in melee. Now as the battle begins, the Eastern Romans move their entire army straight towards those twinkling torches off in the distance. Remember that to them, improbably enough, uh, several of those torch-carrying units are hidden. You can't see them. I guess their torches are providing light only to the owner, very much like Draco Malfoy's Hand of Glory. Now, I'm going to respond by redeploying my archers over to the left and putting them in loose formation, realizing that I'm going to need uh, all of my firepower uh, within range of the eastern archers as soon as they uh, approach me if I'm going to uh, match them in an archery duel and even then I don't think I will be able to in a head-to-head archer-to-archer engagement. What this also serves is to provide uh, an alluring tempting target for his cavalry. Remember that three of those noble cavalry on my left are still hidden in the woods so he can see uh, three apparently undefended uh, archer units without spear warbands behind them and only three units of cavalry. He should be able to crush them quite easily, he thinks. Now the archery duel begins. I've set them to flame arrow uh, at the beginning because that's the default setting uh, when you're fighting a knight uh, battle. I think that's because Creative Assembly just wanted us to see those pretty effects. Uh, but I've switched them back to conventional uh, setting as soon as possible to get the improved uh, rate of fire. Now I send my spear warbands a little forward with the idea of luring his clearly superior uh, comitatenses into attacking them so that I can strike on the flanks with my elite infantry, the, the uh, berserkers and golden band troops, which by this time I am moving forward on my right up into the woods. 
Now, supposedly he could have struck at them with his cavalry at that point, but uh, if he did, then they would have been fighting in the woods and would have suffered from uh, a combat uh, penalty as a result. And he can't use his missile troops against them because they are very quickly hidden again. And I'm kind of hoping that he's going to forget that they're even there. What would I have done if he had sent his infantry against them? I would have sent my spear warbands against his infantry's flank and possibly followed up with my cavalry. <clears throat> By this time he has switched targets for his eastern archers uh, to those spear warbands away from my Lombard archers while well, I'm still targeting his bowmen which means I have a better chance of winning the missile duel now. I send those three exposed units of noble cavalry even further out on my left to make them more vulnerable still and he takes the bait, bites at once and sends his cavalry into attack. So I reveal my hidden cavalry and attempt to achieve envelopments. I am only partially successful in that, and so a move to send one of my units of spear warbands away from the center to try to complete that process. If I can win this cavalry engagement on my left, then I will be able to strike at the rear and flanks of his infantry at will. Uh, as you can see, I've enveloped a couple of his units of cavalry, and I'm going to rout them soon. But his super heavy cataphracts are very tough and stubborn opponents. And he's reacted to my sending infantry away from the center by doing the same uh, to support his cavalry. So I send a second unit. In this way, more troops are being sucked away from the center into this battle over on the left. And my spear warbands, which are badly damaged by archers at this point, break and scatter pretty quickly. Now if I simply allow this to go on, with units being sucked away from the center to the left, then these units over on the right that I have ready to complete an inflanking maneuver uh, will become useless. So it's time to fix those Comet Atensis in the center and create a battle that I can actually win. I send my spear, my spear warbands forward, send my berserkers and golden band over to the, around the right. Once again those spear warbands have taken damage from archers already and one unit breaks pretty quickly. But now I'm hitting those Comet Atensis uh, from behind and doing some serious damage. Now in the cavalry battle over on the left, three units of my noble cavalry have managed to crush two of his cavalry. His general infuriatingly escapes as the last man alive in his entire unit. Uh, discretion is very definitely the better part of valor for that weakling. I'm not sure if Roman generals were still falling on their swords by this period in the Roman Empire, but if not, then the custom should be revived, especially for him. In the center, the engagement with the uh, East Roman infantry uh, comes to a new height as he switches his infantry back from the cavalry engagement, which gives me the opportunity to mass all of my remaining horsemen against his and completely and decisively crush the cavalry on the left. In consequence, the Roman com comitatenses have been surrounded by cavalry, by berserkers, by golden band, and by archers who are still more than a match for the East Roman archers available and which can now be run down by my cavalry at will anyway. This last unit of Comitatenses over on the flank tries to show the others how it's done, uh, throws their javelins valiantly, and then unvaliantly disintegrates this under the weight of missile victory. fire. So in the end I found that my opening plan uh, was uh, effective and could be carried out, though I had to make some adaptations as I went along.